Let's see how well you understand basic algebra. Now, if you have a pretty good understanding of algebra, you should be able to solve this problem. Okay, so if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna walk through the complete solution in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's go and get into the solution to this problem. Okay, so here is our uh, scenario. We have this uh, two variable linear system. That's what this thing is in math. And that's a pretty fa uh, fancy uh, title or description. Like, oh boy, that sounds you know so complex. Two variable linear system. What does this all mean? Well, let's just do a fast review. All right, so two variable. Well, there's two variables here, X and Y. So I'm calling this a two variable linear. Now I'm gonna spell this out real quick. Uh, system. All right, so this is just gonna be a, a quick, quick review. Okay, so two variable. Uh, we have two variables, X and Y. Now linear, what's the root word of linear? Okay, so this is a big word in algebra. Well, the root word is line. Okay, so these uh, equations here are actual equations of lines. Okay, in other words, a line that you can graph on the x, y plane. So this is some line right here, and this is like another line. All right, so now we are considering uh, this uh, as kind of one thing. All right, now when we're looking at two uh, equations as one, okay, that's what we call effectively a system. There's uh, certainly a more um, kind of detailed uh, definition of a system, but that's basically kind of more or less what it is. All right, so a two variable linear system. Now, how do you solve these? Well, effectively the solution, now remember these things right here represent x, y points. So let's go ahead and talk about these real quick. Remember, this is a line and this is a line. In other words, we can graph this line and graph this line. And uh, let's talk real quick about what the solution to a linear system uh, represents. So I'm gonna kind of sketch out real quick a basic x, y graph, All right? So here's x, here's y. And let's suppose one of these lines looks like this. We'll call this line one. And maybe another line goes like this. Okay, we'll call this line two. All right, so again, we're going back over here to our linear systems. So our, our equations in our linear systems. So maybe this is like line two, and then this is like line one. So don't let this notation bother you. But you can see here that in my little uh, sketch, uh, these things intersect right here. Okay, let me use a different color. So right there, these points are intersecting at this uh, uh, spot, okay, this location on the xy plane. So the way you describe a point or location on the xy plane is an xy coordinate. Now, for example, this one could be maybe like one, uh, one, two, three, four, maybe something like one, four. All right, so hopefully. Uh, you understand how to plot points on the xy plane and you know how to graph lines these are very basic uh, algebra skills and if you're struggling with any of this i'll give you some specific recommendations how you can improve and learn this stuff all right so the whole idea um, behind solving a system a two variable linear system is to effectively try to find the point of intersection in other words i'm going to graph this line graph this line and where these two lines uh, intersect is the solution, okay? So in this case, uh, our um, answer is C, three, five. So if I was to actually graph these lines, we would find that these uh, lines would intersect uh, at this point, three, five on the X, Y plane. All right, but uh, when it comes to systems, there's all, con all kinds of different scenarios that can happen. So you can have one line, okay, like this, and of course you have another line, that uh, crosses through this, we can actually graph the lines and look for the point of intersection. That's called the graphing method, right? And this is something you learn in algebra. But let's suppose we graph this second line and it goes like this, all right? So let's say our second line, uh, when we graph it, it looks like this. Now this, these two lines here are parallel. So what do you think the solution is? You might be saying, hmm, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, they're not crossing. Maybe there is no solution. Well, you would be correct, right? So uh, here, uh, you know, this system has no solution. So 
you know, you, it's, you're not guaranteed to have a solution when it comes to a system. You have to work the problem out. So you can have a scenario where you have a solution. You can have a scenario where there is no solution. And then you can have another scenario where you have infinitely many solutions, where you have one line on top of another line. So, you know, this is really big and important uh, topics in um, algebra. But uh, let's go back to how we can solve this it's super easy. And then we'll get into actually how to directly solve this using some algebra. All right. So, all right. So, again, remember, these are x, y points. OK, now, if you understood that, you could just start testing points. So let's just go ahead and test our correct answer. Let's suppose you're testing these and oh, these are not going to work. And you get to choice C. So uh, 3 is x and 5 is y. So what we need to do here is plug in for these variables uh, a 3. And we kind of uh, be very clear about this. 3 is going to be our x and 5 is going to be our y. So for y right here, let's plug in a 5. And for x, we'll plug in a 3. Now let's see if this works out. Well, 3 plus 5 is 8. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. And now let's go and check this equation. So this would be 3 minus 5 uh, is 3 minus 5, negative 2. Uh, indeed, this works out. So you can just, uh, you know, plug these uh, solutions in until you find the, the right one that balances the equations, right? The ones that makes this thing work. Because if you plug in 1, 7, we're going to have 1 plus 7. Although this 1, 7 works right here, Okay, this is another great thing about <laughs> this particular question. Uh, you can be like, oh, 1, 7, a 1 plus 7. Look, Mr. YouTube Math, man, that works right here. But 1, 7 is not going to work down here. You have to check both equations. So 1 minus 7, this is a negative 6. Negative 6 is not equal to negative 2. So when you're solving um, or when you're checking solutions into a linear systems on multiple choice questions, you have to check both uh, solutions, all right, both uh, equations, excuse me. All right, so again, if you understand this, this is one of these questions that you should like get 100% right. All right, so this is how you um, answer the question with just basic algebra knowledge and an understanding of the answers by just plugging in and checking. Now let's go ahead and get into the uh, actual algebra to solve this system. All right, so we talked about how we could graph these lines and then find the point of intersection. That's actually called the graphing method. And if you had a graphing paper, you could actually do this, but that's a, not a practical method. What we want to do here is use algebraic methods to solve this system. And uh, there's basically two main methods. There's the substitution method and there's uh, the linear combination, sometimes referred to as the elimination method. They're both equally good, and you need to know both, okay? And you use one method. Uh, uh, it all re really depends on the system and, um, you know, whether the question is saying, hey, you, uh, use the substitution method to solve or use the elimination uh, method to solve. But you need to know both methods. All right, so in this particular problem, I am going to use the elimination method. And both of these methods, what we're trying to do is build one equation with one variable. So for example, if I said, hey, 2x two plus, two x, plus uh, x minus 3 is equal to 7, most of you out there hopefully could solve this basic algebra equation because there's only one variable, x, right? And then we have our numbers here. So what we want to do is get away from equations with two variables. We want to just make one, one equation here with one variable. So we want to eliminate one variable, OK? Now, how can we do that? Well, it just all depends on the method that you're going to be using, the substitution or uh, elimination uh, or linear combination. The objective is the same, is to create a new equation with one variable. So let's go ahead and see how this works. I'm trying to cover a good amount in a short period of time, but uh, you know, um, those of you out there that are studying algebra, uh, you definitely have to master these techniques. And so if you're confused, uh, I will give you uh, some specific recommendations on how you can really master this in just one second. So if you get a little bit lost, just kind of stick with me. All right, so we're going to use the elimination linear combination method. Now, this method's awesome because it's basically like the peanut butter and jelly method of solving systems. In other words, here's our bread, here's our peanut butter and our jelly. We're going to combine this into uh, one lovely sandwich. 
And you're allowed to do that when it comes to systems. In other words, I can actually combine uh, these two equations to form a new equation. Okay. Now, sometimes the new equation uh, that is, um, you know, the result of adding two equations together, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, that's not going to really help us out. But in this case, if we combine these two equations right here, we're going to eliminate the y variable. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and add down combining these, right? A linear combination. We're combining these to eliminate. Okay, eliminate what? The y variable. So x plus x is 2x plus y minus y is 0. So the y's go away. We're super happy about that. And then 8 minus 2 is 6. So we have 2x is equal to 6. And now we could solve this uh, equation because we only have one variable. 2x is equal to 6. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to 3. All right, now that we have 1, whoops, kind of went too far right here. Now that we have 1, of the variables here, x is equal to 3. To figure out what y is uh, equal to, all we have to do is plug in this 3 into this equation or this equation. So let's go to take the next step right now, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just love the way I kind of just sneak that in? Well, I have to sneak it in because I have a goal. Now, I hope you have a goal, okay, whatever that might be, okay? Maybe your goal is to, like, hurry up and pass math and never take math again. Yeah, that's a great goal, okay, if that happens to be your goal. But whatever the case is, you should have goals in your life, okay? Like, hey, this is what I'm trying to go for. Maybe you're trying to get your degree. Maybe you're trying to get your certification. Maybe you're just trying to relearn math. Maybe you're trying to stay healthy. Whatever the case is, you should have goals. Now, my goal with this channel is to reach as many people as possible to help them in math. Now, I'm pretty fortunate. I do reach a lot of people, but I need to reach more because that's what makes me happy as a math teacher because there's nothing worse than, you know, talking to a person that says, you know, I've been struggling with math. I hated math always since 1965. I had some math teacher tell me I was terrible at math and I was going to be an engineer. And I, I can't tell you how many stories uh, I've lost count. Okay, and they're kind of sad stories. They're not kind of sad. They actually are because a lot of people were discouraged about math either because of their own negative thinking, I'm bad at math, which is not right, or some somebody told them that, you know, something that they believed. And this impacted their entire life. So I'm trying to intervene and be like, hey, no, 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 you can learn math, but it requires work, eff work effort and great instruction. All right, so real quick before we get into the rest of this problem, if you are struggling in algebra, you need to know about systems, linear systems, two variable systems, check out my, my pre-algebra, algebra one course, really my algebra one course. I'll, you'll see a link to it in the description below. But systems are, uh, this topic of systems is taught, it's kind of introduced in pre-algebra, but it's in algebra one, it's in algebra two, it's even in pre-calculus. It's a big, big deal. Matter of fact, in college, there's a, a, a dedicated math, very advanced math course called Linear Algebra. And Linear Algebra is like a key, uh, you know, math that you need to understand for like, you know, all this artificial intelligence progress. All this stuff is used in real life. All right. Now, I know I'm talking a lot here, uh, but, you know, I want to keep you motivated, all right, to keep working on math, right? Don't give up. And if you need uh, more help beyond this video, you know where to look. All right. So let's go and finish this up now. So X is equal to three. That is what the answer is for X. So how do we find Y? Well, you have two equations. X plus Y is equal to eight and X minus Y is equal to negative two. So I can replace this X or this X. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, I'll choose this uh, equation. Of course, this equation will be a little bit easier to solve for Y, right? So now that we know X is three, we're gonna replace this X with three. So we have three plus Y is equal to eight. So to solve this equation for Y, all we have to do is subtract three from both sides of the equation and we have Y is equal to five. But what does that mean? Well, that means that in this system, if we were to graph these two uh, lines, these two linear equations, uh, those lines would intersect at the coordinate three, five, the ordered pair, okay? The point on the X, Y axis. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, you just need to uh, stop with the commentary and just get to the math. Well, listen, 
a huge part of being successful in math. I've been doing this for decades. When I've helped people in math, the first place I have to start is their mindset. Okay, I can't help somebody if they have a negative mindset. And I'm talking about they're not negative themselves. I'm talking about, uh, you know, I'm not going to really learn this. And I start with, you know, kind of the personal development side. I say, hey, listen, I get someone motivated. Hey, you can do this. You know, get them really believing in themselves. And as soon as you start believing in yourself in terms of like, oh, I can do this, you start getting, you know, some confidence about your ability to learn then everything is going to go smoother. I'd never try to teach somebody, uh, you know, initially by just, you know, I, I check in to see what kind of mindset they have. So you need to do that for yourself. I wish I could do that for all of you out there. I can't, but I'm just here to tell you, right? I'm kind of passing this message on that needs to be said because uh, there's so much negative news about math proficiencies these days. Everyone's failing math. You know, we're declining as a country, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, if you want to be successful in math, you absolutely can. So don't give up. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.